ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम combination of spin orbit coupling but we can try to take two particles at rest that means orbital angular momentum is zero and we can take two spin half electrons and combine them we can do that the same methodology i told told in the earlier slide what is the modification the only modification is a direct product space will be a spin space of first particle times the spin space for the second part is that correct you can see it in that diagram so you can take two spin half at rest okay so that means the l for the first particle is zero l2 for the second particle is zero i don't need to worry about it if something is zero spin it is like as if it is simply too much of a rule adding a zero to anything angular momentum addition that that's nothing okay so we can try to take the space as spin space now for such a particle you can write it as a direct product space of s1 ms1 s2 ms2 i have suppressed the orbital quantum number assuming that it is that is this for simplicity what is this space called it's called as the uncoupled okay so this can be this is what we call it as uncoupled basis you could also write the total spin right you can write the total as z as s1z plus s2z what is the meaning of this in this coupled basis it should be technically treated as s1z cross identity plus identity cross s2z in this direct product space. but i can also take the coupled basis where it is total z total s z and total s and i can write a coupled basis as s1 s2 s ms this is a coupled basis is that okay s1 s2 will be half yeah uh yeah you can do that but just for simplicity i am just saying the tag of particle 1 and particle 2 i just want to keep it but uh, if you have two spin half you can put s1 and s2 to be half as is technically you can write half half this so these are various scenarios where you can combine two spin half particles at rest you can combine orbital angular momentum and spin quantum number of a single particle you can have various other things i don't really worry about experimentalist tells that this object has angular momentum j1 another object has angular momentum j2 can you combine and do the physics then what will you take it is j1 plus j2 all kinds of combinations and you don't really worry about once he gives angular momentum you don't question what is the orbital what is the spin you take that as an entity which is given to you so given whatever is the data you can write this is what i try to motivate you that you can have two bases one is uncoupled bases where individual particles in this case the tag is maintained individual spin half particle information is maintained in the uncoupled bases but in the couple basis you don't know what is the contribution of the individual spin half particles okay you know the total quantum number 
So that is why it is called coupled. So again, two coupled equivalent space, you can write. As he said, you can put S1 and S2 to be half. Just to keep track of the tag of one and two particle, I'll put it. So now, I try and take you into a formal that given two particles with angular momentum, I don't question what is the composition of this angular momentum. The experimentalist tells me that this particle has quantum number J1 and the second particle has quantum number J2. How it is composed of orbital and spin, he doesn't give me and I don't worry. The only thing you know is that these two particle angular momentum operators, they have to commute. When you take two particles, even in the earlier case, in the earlier case, the S1 operator commutes with S2 operator. They are two different particles, okay? So, you can take J1i commutes with J2j, where J1 is for particle 1 and J2 is for particle 2 and take any particular component, I component and the J component and that combination is that commutator is always. This is the meaning of saying that these two particle angular momentum operators they commute. So, uncoupled basis states we can write a tensor product or a direct product of J1 M1 times J2 M2 or equivalently people write this as J1 J2 semicolon M1 M2. This also I try to stress with spin orbit and two spins that you can write the total angular momentum formally as J1 plus J2 but you should remember that J1 will operate only on the first state and similarly J2 will operate on the second state. Most of the times they don't write cross identity plus identity cross J2, but you should remember this. So, that is an equivalent basis in the coupled angular momentum or total angular momentum, which is an equivalent basis because the dimension of these two will match. So, change of basis, how do you do it? I have kind of indicated to you. One is the dimensionality have to be equal. You know that here the dimension is 2j1 plus 1 times 2j2 plus 1. And in this case, the j will go from j minimum to j maximum. And 2j plus 1 has to be summed up and it should add up to be like this. Is that clear? What is the range of j? I have not really told you. This j, this j, but we will come to it. But there are constraints. The constraint is that the dimensionality of both uncoupled bases and the coupled bases have to be equal. The matrix which relates them, this is what is the famous Klebs Gordon matrix. Okay, it is called CG coefficient matrix or Klebs Gordon matrix. And interestingly, you can put and insert an identity operator. Is that okay? Yeah, you can write the identity operator. This should be a this should be a ket. This one, right? So just this is a typo. Please correct it. This should be a ket. So you can put an outer product here and sum it up so that. This matrix element, this inner product which you have, is a matrix element of this Klebs Gordon matrix. So, let me just redo it on the sheet for this is very important, so I do not want you to. So, you will have J1, J2, Jm. Okay, so this is what we call it as a coupled basis. I prefer to put this coupled basis with the curved line. Usually, we put it as angular bracket. Just to remember that it is curved. Uh, it is a coupled basis. I just like to keep tag of it by putting a curved line. Not that books book put it, but just for our sake, we will put this. Here, I am going to insert an identity operator and write this J1, J2, Jm. 
and this identity operator is in the uncoupled basis which will be m1 m2 m1 m2 okay so you have j1 j2 j m will be summation over m1 m2 I have just inserted it here, wrote the inner product which is a coefficient, okay, is that alright? And then it is in terms of the state. So this coefficient J1, J2, M1, M2, J1, J2, Jm, this is what is called as a cleft cordon. CG coefficient, we write it for the first time, cleft, always miss this, SCH, Gordon, what did we do? It was J1, J2, M1, M2, J1, J2, JM, just to remember that it is couple basis, I put this angular bracket, it's not necessary. This is the CG coefficient. Sometimes some books denote this this way. Okay. And sometimes they call this as a Wigner 3J symbol. This just to remember that you combining J1 and J2 with the corresponding magnetic quantum number M1 and M2. The combined J1 and J2 is the total J. That J is not just a, a simple scalar addition. The J is having some range, we will come to it. And you also have a corresponding magnetic quantum number associated with this. This is a different notation, but sometimes the CG coefficient matrix are written in this form. Both are equivalent. So this is the matrix element of the coupled state, coupled basis state with the uncoupled basis state. That matrix element is what will give you the coefficients of the CG matrix. This is one of the elements. So this depends on whatever is the different J, M and different M1, M2 and we do all possible ways. Aim is, our aim is to work out for two spin half particles at rest. What are these coefficients? Similarly, let's take orbital angular momentum of a particle to be 1, which is a spin half particle. Let's find out what is the CG coefficient for that case. And the reason we need the CG coefficient is if you know the CG coefficient, you can go between coupled bases and uncoupled bases back and forth using the CG coefficient. Some situation, the coupled bases will be a convenient basis. In some situation, uncoupled bases will be okay to work with. But if you want to go back and forth, you should know what is the CG coefficient you should know how to compute the CG coefficients. That is what is the main, you know, calculational things which we are going to do. So this angular bracket has to be a cat there. And the matrix elements are called the CG coefficients. And it is, I have put the same bracket here. But you could try and just for remembering 
as coupled bases you can slightly smudge this back okay how do we prove this how do we prove that the cg coefficient is non zero only when the total n is restricted to be the sum of m1 and m2 how do we prove it it's very simple take the total jz operator jz minus j1z minus j2z what is that jz is equal to j1z plus j2z so jz minus j1z minus j2z is a zero operator null operator the jz will prefer to operate on which basis jz will prefer to operate on the coupled basis right jz is the total j z component of the total j it will prefer to operate on the coupled basis that will give you mh cross j1z will prefer to operate on uncoupled basis that will give you m1 h cross j2 z will give you m2 h cross m minus m1 minus m2 has to be zero because this is a null operator many cg coefficients will be zero trivially by this condition and the good part about this is that this also fixes some kind of a selection rule in experiments when they take a selection rule of combining interacting two particles with magnetic quantum numbers m1 and m2 they have to make sure that such an interaction should satisfy this condition m equal to m1 plus m2 so many processes in the lab which gives you a selection rule they are all dictated by the simple operator rule which we see in our angular momentum algebra between the coupled basis operator and the uncoupled basis operator the difference has to be zero that forces this condition so what have we seen here we have seen that jz which you can write it as j1z cross identity plus identity cross j2z if you take jz minus j1z formally people don't write this but if you want you can put this in for at least for the first time and minus identity cross j2z that is zero and you take it between the coupled basis and the uncoupled basis so this is uncoupled and take it to be the coupled basis the uncoupled basis is this and coupled basis is this if you do that jz will give you mh cross and if you don't want your coefficient to be zero then that tells you puts a restriction that this coefficient is non zero if m1 plus m2 is n can be arbitrary what else can we get out of this this kind of a simple operator between coupled basis operator is this uncoupled basis operator is this can we get some more information with j plus minus we can do that also right we can put j plus here and write it as j1 plus cross identity plus identity cross j j2 plus we can do that and we can start seeing is there some kind of a restrictions which we can get so this is a simple restriction which i have got okay what is the maximum value of the total magnetic quantum number the j1 maximum is m m1 has to be j1 m2 has to be j2 so m maximum is j1 plus j2 if m maximum is j1 plus j2 what is the corresponding total j maximum jm when i write if m max is j1 plus j2 the j has to be at least j1 plus j2 and if it is the maximum it cannot exceed that that will be the maximum value for so let's that summation which i did for j max and j min i can try to so i will write m has to be m1 plus m2 m1 max is j1 m2 max is j2 so your m max 
equal to J1 plus J2. This implies J max has to be J1 plus J2. Because this side is the coupled basis, this side is the uncoupled basis and from here the J and M I can find it out. Can we determine what is J min now? We can use the equation with the dimensionality. We had here the dimension was 2J1 plus 1 into 2J2 plus 1. This side will be 2J plus 1 summation from J min to J max. Just for simplicity, let us take J2 to be less than J1, less than or equal to J1. Once you know this, you can do the other way around also. And then we can figure out what should be J min. I will leave it to you as an exercise. Just check just by doing this series. J max is given to you, is J1 plus J2. That is given. Okay? Find out what is J min. What I will do is let me stop here.